Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for DMs. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today, we are talking about how to run a one-shot in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. A one-shot is a small adventure that is usually played on one gaming evening. Now, depending on the length of time that you play for, usually they run about four to eight hours. So they could, in some cases, be two or three shots. A lot of the rules that we talk about in our video for how to design a dungeon uh, still apply to creating one-shots. And you may want to use those to help amplify your one-shots that you're creating. But there are some more specific points that we want to get into today. So there's a lot to discuss today. So let's get rolling. The biggest thing that makes a one-shot different from running a regular D&D campaign is time. A one-shot begins and ends in a single game session. Beyond that, we feel that a one-shot has now grown beyond a one-shot into a mini campaign. And there's been a lot of popularity around the idea of running one-shots most re recently because it's a great way to try new adventures out, try new classes out, try new game mechanics out, try new adventures, even new role-playing games, or try playing games with new people. But there's some challenges as well that come along with running a one-shot adventure. This is made more challenging by the fact that many of the adventures that people reach for when planning one-shot adventures, such as those published in Candlekeep Mysteries or Tales from the Yawning Portal or Ghosts of Saltmarsh, um, are actually more than one-shots. <laughs> and in many cases, many of the adventures presented in the 5th edition kind of anthology module books are a bit more than what you can do in a single game session. Um, I don't. We've tried running many of them, and I don't think there's a single one that we got through in a single game session. Regardless, there are many reasons why you may want to run a one-shot. First of all, one-shots are a great way to get a new group of players into the game without having to commit to a long-term campaign. Perhaps you're trying out a group of new players or a brand new DM, or you're just all diving into D&D for the first time. You could also be in a situation where you have one brand new player and you want to see how they gel with the group. One shots are also very common if you're playing at conventions or at game stores where you get together with a group of strangers to play a little bit of D&D. Another reason why you might be playing a one-shot is to try out some homebrew material. Perhaps before you get into the daunting task of building your own world, you want to see what it feels like to build a small-scale adventure. Or perhaps you're trying out brand new rules. Maybe you've made some new feats, spells, or magic items, and you want to see how they play at the table, again without dropping them into a long-term campaign. One-shots are a perfect place to do this. Contrary to popular advice, though, I personally believe that running a one-shot is not the ideal way to start as a dungeon master. I don't think it's a bad idea to run a one-shot. I would just gear towards doing the two or three shot. Yeah. Just to give yourself more room rather than trying to t get a taste of what it is. Especially if you're trying to decide if DMing is something that you want to do. You might find that some of the pressure caused by a one-shot exaggerates the challenges of being a dungeon master in a way that can be off-putting. So if you tried DMing and you ran a one-shot and it didn't go well, give yourself more credit because one-shots are actually really hard. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you are a first-time DM, the best way to approach this is to use that term loosely. Don't tell your players we're going to start and finish in one game session. Prepare a one-shot in your head, but tell your players, hey, we're going to get together for a few weeks in a row and play out this adventure arc. Mm -hmm. If it takes three, four, five sessions, don't worry too much about it. As a first-time DM, don't be holding yourself to a single game session to complete this. It's just a little bit of a challenge. And even for new players to the game, introducing new players with a one-shot can work really, really well at being that kind of gateway into the hobby. But I do even find for new players, it is good to get them to commit to one or two game sessions uh, to really give them the breathing room of how the Dungeons & Dragons experience works. And again, the reason for this is that a one-shot's const time constraint really does mean that some of the best parts about D&D don't always have the room to breathe that we would like to see them have. Now that being said, a lot of game systems do have very small campaigns or modules to run. But I think the point there is 
you can run them, but run more than one of them. Mm -hmm. I've also used one-shots for running classic adventures from the D&D canon, like the Tomb of Horrors or Castle Ravenloft. But again, in both cases, it actually took three or four game sessions to get through these. So if you are setting out to run a one-shot, whether it's one game session or three or four game sessions, first and foremost, let's talk about some of the points for planning your one-shot. One of the first points is getting your players ready for a one-shot. Oftentimes, if you're doing a long-term campaign, we recommend a session zero where everybody meets up, they make their characters, you discuss the elaborate plots and themes of the campaign and make sure everybody's ready for it. A session zero can still be helpful, but with a one-shot, it might be easier to do the session zero through text or email or some sort of digital platform where you simply ask your players to come prepared with characters ready to play. If it's their first time playing D&D, you might even use pre-generated characters just because you want everybody to be able to try out the game system rather than being bogged down with players and creating backstories and all of this intricate weaving plot. Instead, people just want to get into the action, try out their cool characters, and get playing. You can still have lots of great role playing in a one shot, but oftentimes because they are characters that are being played for the very first time, many players will gravitate towards tropes or cliches or a funny accent or some sort of vocal mask. So you might also want to measure your expectations for how much in depth the role playing you're going to get from players in a one shot. I also do find that a one-shot is a perfect opportunity to speed up the character creation process by using things like fixed hit points um, and a point buy for ability scores or a pre-generated array. Again, character creation can be one of those things that even if you can roll up a character in 15 minutes, multiply that by five people and all of a sudden you've eaten up a ton of time in your four-hour one-shot. So having the characters ready to go before the session begins is a really important element. And I do also recommend for a one-shot, it's worth having the conceit that the player characters have all been hired for a mission or they all know someone in some way, shape, or form. So you kind of skip that whole phase of like, do the characters trust each other? Yes, they do. They know each other, they've been working together, they're here to have an adventure together. When you are planning your one-shot, you want to make sure to set clear expectations with your player characters. One-shots can be a great time to try out new and complex ideas, but you want to keep it simple enough to fit into a one-shot. This involves player buy-in. You want your players to be ready and prepared for whatever it is that you're offering as the one-shot. If you're doing something like a prison break or a heist or uh, something a little more elaborate, tell your players up front that that is what they are getting into so that they are ready and already bought into the idea. This helps reduce the time in game that the players have to spend figuring out what the mission is and what it is they're, they're going to do to handle it. If you are gonna be testing out any new rules like Unearthed Arcana or your own homebrew rules, maybe you've designed your own class or subclass or spell, it's probably a good idea to provide those to the players before the session begins and maybe even discuss those a little bit beforehand. Um, again, it's totally possible in a one-shot to do some pretty complicated things. But I would say that if you're running the one-shot for new players or people you've never played D&D with before or you're a first-time dungeon master, you really kind of want to pick your poisons, right? If, you've got, if you're introducing D&D to new people or you're playing D&D with people that you've never played with before, you might want to err on the side of simplicity for your one-shot, particularly if you are playing with new people who you're doing that kind of like, let's just play D&D together casually to see if we enjoy playing D&D together. Keeping the adventure simple and maybe more focused on a dungeon exploration sort of scenario lets everyone kind of, you know, it's it's like ordering a pepperoni pizza at a get-together. There's going to be something that everyone there is going to enjoy, and as long as you get a meat lover's, a veggie, and a cheese pizza, you basically got all your bases covered. If you're designing your own one-shot, something that's important is that a lot of us who get into homebrewing and world building love to build epic worlds with lots of history and lore. Although history and lore can be a great 
motivator for your adventures. You want to focus your one shot on the story that the players are going to be interacting with. Oftentimes there's not going to be a lot of time to spend doing lore dumps or building out the entire world. If you do have lore that you want to advertise to your players, build it into the adventure that they're experiencing. Maybe the location that they're going to has a little bit of lore that they can learn by navigating through the dungeon or talking to an NPC. But the more time that you spend building out the lore and history, the less time you're spending getting into the meat of the game. So a one shot should be about the action and what the players are interacting with in front of them. Simple ingredients can still produce complex flavors. And so that's where with it one shot, it's more about being effective with your storytelling tools and really making sure that there is a focus on the action and things that are going to be moving the the scenario forward. If you're spending a lot of time talking about backstory and there or a significant amount of information is needed for the players to understand what's going to happen in the adventure, you might want to consider building some sort of handout that the players can refer to later on. Um, I actually think that this is a great way to orient the entire one shot of saying, yeah, your players have received a letter from an important non-player character who's hired them for their mission. And the letter outlines like a mission briefing, what the quest is going to be about. This way, the players know what they're getting into before they arrive at the game session. You've kind of already done the job of, of figuring out why the players are working together and explaining what their objective is. It's a really efficient way to get the action rolling. This is because one of the biggest obstacles for a one-shot is the opening. That first hour or two of play, I've played countless one-shots that have spent over half their time just getting organized and just trying to get off the runway. And that is the biggest mistake with it, with a one shot. The longer that runway time before the actual action and the, the before you get to the meet, the more chances you're not going to finish the one shot. <laughs> Talking about getting into the action as quickly as possible, let's talk about your adventure structure. Whether you are running a pre-written module that you're adapting into a one-shot, or if you're making your own, there are some tweaks that you may want to do to make it work as a one-shot. And getting into the action as quickly as possible is one of the most important keys. So when we talk about the adventure structure, we kind of break it down that you want about three to five encounters that you're going to be planning when designing your adventure. You want at least one social encounter, one exploration encounter, and one combat encounter. Now, generally speaking, you're going to have a little bit more than this. And one of the things we strongly recommend is actually starting with an easy combat encounter. In our experience, when players make characters for a one-shot, they are excited to try out their new abilities. And so starting with a combat encounter is a perfect icebreaker for a one-shot. It lets all the players get a feeling for how their character is going to play. It really delivers on that excitement and anticipation that they're waiting for. And it sets your adventure off with a bang in media res. There's really not much more to it than that. It can be anything as simple as goblins or orcs attack, or a bar fight breaks out or they get attacked by pirates on the high seas. Just something to get to set the scene really quickly, get the blood pumping, get everyone excited and get everybody engaged. Beyond that, what I like to gauge is that each of these encounters is gonna take about 45 minutes to resolve at the table. So by planning roughly five of them, that gives me a little bit of wiggle room to fill four hours because inevitably one of these encounters is gonna run long we're gonna to need to take a break somewhere for 15, 20 minutes to get dinner, to get drinks, so that people can go to the washroom, things like that. And inevitably, you know, someone might be late as well. Something might run faster or slower. So if I plan a full five encounters, what I will generally do is make one of those encounters a skippable, easy combat as well. So if I need to, if I get halfway through the session and I really wanna to get to the exciting stuff, I can jettison one of those encounters, lighten the load, and focus on the most exciting bits. 
A great example of a well-structured one-shot is actually in The Lost Minds of Fendelver, and it's the first mission you go on, which is the Kragma hideout. It starts with the action. You find a broken-down cart on the road and are ambushed by three or four goblins. Mm -hmm. Not a big challenge, but your low-level party gets to kill these goblins. They get to try out their hand at combat. That then leads to an exploration section where they now follow the trail of the goblins to try to find their hideout. Once they reach the hideout, they infiltrate the hideout, and there are possible social encounters within the hideout that they can have, as some of the goblins, there's a little bit of a rivalry in there. And then they fight several goblins. There's a bugbear, some wolves, and other creatures for them to engage with. And that is all that you need for a one-shot. The story is simple, but we started with action. We moved into exploration. There's room enough for role play and characters to, to kind of explore their personalities. But then we also dive into the meat as quickly as possible. This structure works really, really well and delivers everything you want out of a one-shot in a nice, clean package. Yeah, so when I'm looking around at published adventures for one-shots, I tend to look for ad adventures that have a similar structure to this, that again, follow that model of about five encounters with a couple that I might just be able to, you know, cancel if, if, we're, if we're short on time. Because again, with the one-shot, you want to make sure you get to the end and give that time to breathe. So many times I have run one-shots where we got to the climactic encounter with half an hour left on the clock, and we didn't have time to resolve the story after the last battle. In my experience, it's better to end early than go over time with with one shots. And so I one of the, I, I find it's really important to be mindful of that time and doing that extra layer of planning really, really pays dividends to know, okay, this is how it's all gonna work out over this this time period. So now you've done your prep work, let's talk about actually running the one shot. A lot of the stuff that we've done in our prep work has already helped us alleviate a lot of the pressure when we're running the game. And we've already talked about a lot of these points, but when you're actually sitting down at the table with your players, step one is skip the preamble. Again, if you're doing a long-term campaign, the entire first session might be the characters arrive in the city. They meet the NPC, the NPC talks to them about their quest. They maybe go to the library and search through books to find information. They gear up by going to the shops and shopkeepers and learning their surrounding village before they set out on their adventure. In a one shot, we don't have time for that. They should already know the prominent NPC. They should already have the mission. If they need to buy potions, don't worry so much about, ah, you head to the store of, of potions and the shopkeeper there who, and you give this epic description and they have a conversation. Instead, just say, how many potions do you want to buy? Here's how much they are. And they use their gold to buy the potions. You want to skip all of this unnecessary preamble and just get your players into the adventure. You can still use one line of description if you want to add a little bit more spice to, to the whole interaction. So it, it's about being brief in the right moments so that you can focus on the key moments and give them the time to breathe. When you run a one-shot, know what the meat is. Know what the most exciting part of the one-shot is and be prepared if you have to, to summarize, gloss over, or just kind of move on to the next scene. One example of this is that maybe you're in one of the early combat encounters, a simple combat encounter before the climactic one. If the players are winning already and maybe they've killed two of the three goblins and you realize that they're pushing this combat encounter a little long, this is a great time to just ask them, you, you're able to easily defeat the rest of the goblins, what happens? And let them kind of narrate their victory over the goblins. What I like to do is generally finish out the last round so that every player does get an opportunity to have one last turn before it do does so. And then I'll say at that point, the enemies surrender or flee or give them the opportunity to cut them down. Also, especially if you're playing with a new group of players, be very forgiving of your players if they are struggling. If you have your exploration section and they are having a hard time piecing together what they need to find the dungeon, rather than dragging it on, just make it obvious and let them find the dungeon. Let them solve the puzzle. If you're building up to something 
and you have spent more than half an hour or 45 minutes and the players still aren't getting where they need to go, just push them there and get them there. This is okay in a one shot because again, knowing what the meat and heart of your story is, is important. And the rest of it is just to let them try things out and play D&D. You want to watch for signs if your players are being indecisive, risk averse, or if they are struggling to fi- trying to figure out what they're supposed to do next. This is an opportunity where it can be a little bit okay to allow for some metagaming or to gently push the cart forward on the rails to just keep the story moving along. along. I've seen so many one-shots grind to a halt because the dungeon master was looking for the players to take a very specific action or do a very specific task and the players were confused and didn't know what to do and and or were too afraid to kick down the door and go inside the dungeon if you see this happening at your table during your one shot do what you need to do in that moment to either assuage your players concerns or give them another clue there's a lot to be said for one shots when you relate them to other forms of media that you might be drawing inspiration from Maybe you watch a lot of TV shows and movies or read a lot of novels. The thing with a one-shot is that rather than a TV show that takes time to build, explore the characters and the depth, think of it more like a movie. Movies often start with action, you get to know the characters relatively quickly, and we move into the plot as fast as possible. You only have a certain amount of time to deliver the entire story arc. So unlike a television series where you build and build through the episodes up to a climax at the end of the season, You want to make sure to structure your story around this more simple storytelling idea. Getting to the action and getting to the meat of your story is the most important thing. One shots are about exploring Dungeons and Dragons in an easy to digest uh, session. Whether that's one, two, or three nights with a group of friends, you want to make sure that they get to explore the mechanics and abilities of their characters, role playing and having social engagement, and using some of the skills and general rules of D&D by including a few combat encounters, at least one social encounter, and at least one exploration, you make sure that they get to experience all the pillars of play in an easy to digest one session or two or three. Just because a one-shot condenses an adventure into just a single game session or two, that doesn't mean that you need to compromise on any complexity or there isn't room for improvisation, great role-playing, and lots of interesting storytelling. These are just a couple specific considerations for one-shots, but of course you could always involve any great improv skills that you've developed, any of the time-saving prep tips that we've talked about on this channel before, um, our other videos where we've talked about dungeon design and five-room dungeons. A one-shot is the same as any other D&D session in that there is no right mix of prep involved in it it's not that you you want to make sure that you're not over preparing but you definitely want to be prepared going into the session it's just about those specific considerations that really make the one shot a fun packed evening so this has been a look at designing a one shot in dungeons and dragons fifth edition tell us about some of the great one shots you've ran in the comments below the videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our patreon supporters If you enjoy the content that we create here on YouTube, please consider joining our Patreon community by following the links in the description below. And don't forget to check out our live play Shadows of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we've got plenty more great pieces of advice for Dungeon Masters right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in in the the dungeon. dungeon.